Hello, welcome back to Taking a Gander. In this show, we take a gander at a different city or place to see if it's somewhere you might want to travel to or somewhere you might want to explore. So I'm all about travel. I love to do it. I've done a lot. So I just want to share that knowledge with you. I want to pick cities that I know, pick places that I know, kind of talk about them. Not to make it a definitive travel guide, but more to give you the vibe of what it's like there. So today in episode two, we're going to look at Cleveland, Ohio. So let's get started. So I want to start out by explaining why I picked Cleveland, uh, tell you a little bit about it, and then get into um, some things you might want to do while you're there. So first of all, I p picked Cleveland because I'm actually from Detroit. I grew up in Michigan, and uh, later on, currently, I live in Pittsburgh. So both times I lived on the outside of uh, Ohio, and if you know anything about Michigan or uh, Western, Western Pennsylvania, you'll know that Ohio is kind of our rival, right? So it's always been the other guys, and I always had uh, negative feelings about uh, Cleveland and Ohio in general. But uh, eventually I got a job where I started working in Cleveland. Um, our headquarters was there, so I would go there uh, once every month or two, and I really spent a lot of time there, and I realized uh, it does have a lot to offer, and there's quite a bit that's really cool there. And I think uh, Cleveland's probably under the radar for most people. I'm really curious for people who live in, say, California or I don't know like Washington State or somewhere far away like that if they would even really consider Cleveland and, or if it ever crosses their mind but I promise you there's some reasons it should now this whole area basically from Milwaukee to say upstate New York is the Rust Belt right and the Rust Belt hasn't exactly had the best reputation so this is really interesting so this here shows you the population changes uh, over the last from 2000 to 2018 in all these major Rust Belt cities and you see the population is drastically declining. Uh, Cleveland in that time period lost 22% of its population and currently it sits around 370,000 people that live in Cleveland. Uh, at its peak, which was in the 1950s, they actually had uh, 914,000 people that lived in Cleveland and it was uh, had the nickname the sixth city. It was the sixth biggest city basically and at a certain point it actually broke into number five. So Cleveland used to be one of America's biggest cities. It's fallen off. It's not a secret that Cleveland has some problems with, uh, you know, crime, poverty, as a lot of these cities do, like Detroit. Uh, it's crazy to think that Detroit, Michigan, uh, going into the 1950s, was actually the richest city in America and possibly even the entire world. And yeah, things have changed a lot in Detroit and they have in Cleveland as well. But over the last, you know, 20 years or so, maybe 30 years, I think there's a lot of positive things that have happened in Cleveland for tourism in particular. Uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, for example, is something that really, you know, put Cleveland on the map. And we'll talk about that a little bit today, too. So I want to zoom in and just give you a better idea of what Cleveland looks like. So being part of that Rust Belt and, you know, the shipping that would happen from Detroit to New York and Pittsburgh with steel and the auto industry, Cleveland was positioned really well uh, being on the water here. So it's right on the southern shore of Lake Erie. And if you go to downtown Cleveland, which is the main area we're going to focus on today, this is not a bad spot and actually has quite a bit here so my prejudice against Ohio and Cleveland growing up have changed I can tell you that so what are some reasons you might want to visit Cleveland and why it might be interesting to you so the first one which I'm kind of pointing out here is downtown is actually pretty fun there's quite a bit to do there I'm gonna give some specific recommendations a little bit later on what you can do when you're downtown but overall I'd say if you're just looking for like a weekend downtown trip you want to go out to dinner do a few things like that, you'd be surprised at what you can find here. Um, not only good restaurants, good nightlife, some museums and things like that, but there's also quite a few nice hotels down here, which uh, I'll share a few of those as well. Another reason why you might want to go to Cleveland, which goes back to what I mentioned, is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is located just here, uh, right on the North Shore, next to the football stadium, and next to a small airport, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. But generally speaking, um, this is definitely number one. I mean, if you go to say uh, TripAdvisor, for example, and say, what you know, what, what should I do in Cleveland? Number one thing, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You're gonna see that across different sites. I found another site that's actually pretty interesting. So this site here is something I've come across, which I, I kind of like this site. I do recommend it. It's kind of an alternative to TripAdvisor, a little bit more in detailed on specific things. It's called Only in Your State. And it basically, if you're looking for like the staples, like what's the What's the local food or what's, you know, what's something that the locals are into? This is a good place to go. So once again, 27 top rated attractions in Cleveland. You go down, what's number one? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I guess we could talk about it now. Uh, I have gone there. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it's cool. I, I guess 
just by name. Obviously, it has to do with music and rock and roll history, but uh, what do you really expect there? They do have a concert venue. They do a lot of shows, and obviously, they have awards for people who are inducted into the Hall of Fame, but essentially, it's a museum, right? So you go in. It's a museum. It has all types of memorabilia from musicians. I mean, you see, like, signed guitars. You'll see Jimi Hendrix's own handwriting of some of his songs that he was writing. Things like that are in there. If you have a general interest in music, you'll find a lot there. It goes beyond rock and roll. There's all kinds of artists. There's uh, hip-hop and country, things like that in there as well. There's a section on, like, terrestrial radio. So it's, like, some old, like, radio hosts, and they have, like, famous people from all around the country. And I actually recognize one of the Detroit host that I grew up listening, you know, there's a picture of him in there, for example. This is him right here, Arthur Penhall from The Riff in Detroit. I know I'm getting off track, but you, some people will know who this is. Very iconic voice in Michigan. So going back to the city here, what are some other reasons you might want to visit? So I talked about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, definitely a big reason. Uh, number two, downtown. The third thing, which I'm not really a big sports guy, but Cleveland is actually a really good place to go to a sporting game. So you can see here, they have the three stadiums. So you have football, um, the basketball stadium and the baseball stadium all right near downtown now Cleveland may have been losing population as I mentioned before But that doesn't make it a small market if you look here Cleveland is the 54th largest city in the United States with like I said around 370,000 people But actually if you go by metropolitan area in the Cleveland area, you know Akron Canton the surrounding neighborhoods uh, You have about 2 million people which makes it a decent size for sports teams and for a sports market. So actually the first time I ever went to Cleveland, I was a young kid, I was a punk, I was really into basketball and my friends and I all were. So one of my buddies and I, we drove from Ann Arbor, Michigan all the way to Cleveland and back in the same night just to go to a Cavs game and we saw Kobe versus LeBron. I, I try to look up what game it is. I'm just going to say it's this one here probably uh, because I remember Kobe Bryant scoring a ton of points and I had a Kobe jersey on because I was like that at the Cavs game. Everyone was yelling at me. LeBron ended up like scoring points right at the end and won the game. It was super exciting. So that was my first taste of Cleveland. Uh, I ended up going back a few times for other events. And one of them, which I also mentioned, which was really cool and it kind of shows you something about Cleveland is that people are very passionate. So I went to Cleveland for UFC 203. And this guy, Stipe, is a UFC fighter. He was the heavyweight champ. He's from Cleveland, so everyone was crazy uh, about him coming in, and he was defending his title in Cleveland, which was super exciting for, for us to go to, and I mean, he ended up winning the fight by a knockout in the first round, and when he knocked this other guy out, I'm telling you, it was so loud it actually scared me, because Cleveland people, like a lot of people in the Rust Belt, where like Detroit, Chicago, you know, Pittsburgh, these people are super passionate about their cities and where they come from, so to have a hometown hero like this guy, come in as the champ, defend his title at home. I mean, people were just going nuts. It was really, really exciting. Those are a couple sporting events I did. Again, not a huge sports fan, but even just being in Cleveland made me really like it. I have also been to Progressive Field, which is the baseball stadium. I gotta say, it's uh, it's also pretty fun. They have like, uh, they call it like a club lounge deck or something like that, where you can actually go to some restaurants and bars around the top and you can watch the game. So rather than just sitting in your seat, you can like hang out, get some food get a beer, walk around with your friends while you're watching the game. And uh, I found that to be a really great experience as well. So now that I explained a few reasons why Cleveland might be interesting to you, I want to get into some specifics on uh, what you might want to do there or what some of my recommendations are. So first of all, I know I mentioned downtown a few times and hanging out there, whether you're going to a game or not. And there's a, there's a couple things you definitely want to do when you go downtown. First of all, there's an area called East 4th Street. This is a, a staple of Cleveland, something that any local is going to tell you you got to go to. It's a small walking street here, and it's just loaded with different restaurants and bars, including um, Mabel's. So if you know the uh, famous chef, Michael Simon, he's from Cleveland. So he opened up a couple of restaurants here, and you can go to the street pretty much any day of the week, and you're going to find a bunch to do. Good restaurants, um, good bars. The House of Blues is there, so there's a lot of shows there. You can see concerts and things like that and um, just an overall good time. So this is Mabel's, which I do recommend. It's one of Michael Simon's restaurants, and then next to it is Lola, another one of his. I haven't been there myself, but Mabel's was really good. If you zoom out from here, there's one other thing you might wanna see while you're in the area. On Euclid Avenue, which is pretty much like the main road through this area, you're gonna see the Arcade, which is an indoor mall, and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, talking about a classic building with a classic look. There's like brass and wood everywhere. Uh, super nice and if you really want to get fancy with it the Hyatt Regency takes some of the higher levels 
So you can actually get a room inside of the atrium, which I did one time uh, while I was there for work. It was super cool. And uh, I actually bumped into Hulk Hogan, <laughs> which he just happened to be at the bar in the hotel and we saw him and uh, he was super friendly. I know that like professional wrestlers are obviously pretty big, but I didn't think uh, you realize how tall he is. I think he's like six foot seven and uh, I'm not super tall. So next to him, uh, he just looked like a giant. It was very fun. I'm also going to recommend uh, another hotel that's in this area. I've seen prices at this hotel vary a lot. Sometimes if there's things going on, it can be really expensive. But other nights you can find rooms for under $200. It's called the Hilton Downtown, basically Hilton Downtown Cleveland. And this is an amazing building. I mean, it's so, so beautiful. So you see right here, uh, this tall building right in downtown. Uh, I'm going to talk about the top in a little bit, which is really cool. Show you some pictures that I've taken as well. But it's just a, a really, really nice building. Really fancy, really modern. They have a big conference center. So if you're ever going for work or an event, it's possible you end up here anyways. But I just find this building spectacular. Every room, pretty much no matter which way you're facing, has a special view. You can see this room right here overlooking the football stadium. There's also a small like city airport right next to the football stadium. So you can sit in your room and just watch planes land, which is pretty cool over the water there. One thing that also makes this place really cool is they have some restaurants, including a bar called Bar 32, which is a uh, open area that I was showing. And you can go here, get some fancy drinks. It's really pricey, overpriced, but super nice. And you can see like the whole city, it's, it's beautiful. And for a city like Cleveland, that's not necessarily known for its beauty or views per se, it's actually a, a really spectacular spot. So going back to the map here, we see House of Blues and Mabel's on East 4th Street here. The Cleveland Hilton is just up the street, so walking distance from there. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just up here, so you can see how close everything is. Uh, some of this is walking for some people, otherwise, you know, quick Uber ride. I'm going to recommend one other area that's also close by. It's called the Flats. So this area was basically a repossessed like shipping yard or industrial site and they've turned it into a nightlife kind of venue. There's Punchbowl Social, which is like a, a bowling and arcade type place. There's like a dueling piano bar there. A lot of fun, all kind of in the same parking lot with uh, easy parking, easy access. So I would say this is somewhere definitely to check out if you want to have like a, a good night out or check some of the restaurants out there. So between these, these two areas, I think you're going to have more than you need for nightlife and restaurants. If you're looking for some things outside of nightlife, one thing I would recommend is West Side Market. So just a few miles from, maybe one mile or so from downtown, there's this area called Ohio City. And in Ohio City, there's, there's a West Side Market. So this is another one of those markets. It's a very classic building. I think this site, 1800s or something, when they started using this site for produce, and, and then later on it got a clock tower, and it's, it's just really pretty. They have a lot of food vendors in there. There's some good food. There's like a bunch of people who make like awesome beef jerky. It's cool to walk around in. There are shops on the streets and uh, around it, which are really nice. I'm gonna recommend one in a second. In particular, it's just a cool spot. It's, it's very, you know, classic. I always talk about the markets and how much I love them. I really think this is a spot worth checking out. I will note though, that compared to some of the other uh, artsy ones, this is actually a functioning like butcher and produce place. So you're gonna see some uh, some lamb heads and things like that around. Funny stories, I've been on and off vegetarian for years and years. My wife wasn't until we went here and we were <laughs> in there and this guy rolls out a cart and on the cart is just like, literally like a, just a skinned lamb, like the whole thing. And she saw it and she's been a vegetarian ever since. So if you're thinking about being vegetarian, maybe you should go to Westside Market too. So just behind the market, there's a place called Town Hall for breakfast. I mean, they're open for you know dinner and later too, but specifically I've been there for breakfast a few times and Town Hall is really cool. It's this very like trendy, big open area. Um, they serve like coffee. They're really into like healthy eating, healthy coffees, like all, all kinds of stuff like that. And it's always just a good time. It's really packed. So I definitely recommend uh, going in, maybe putting your name in before you go to Westside Market so that when you come back, uh, you won't have to wait as long because it's always busy. But Town Hall is really cool. They have great food, healthy eating. They have a lot of like interesting coffee drinks that I'd recommend. And it's just a good environment to hang out for like a breakfast or lunch. So I'd definitely check that out. All right. So you've gone to Westside Market, you've gone downtown, you had some dinner, you had some drinks, you you maybe saw a sports game, so you wanna do something a little bit more outside of the city. Uh, there's a couple things I'd recommend. First, I would say, if you go to the east side of the city, there's this uh, very famous cemetery called Lakeview Cemetery. Uh, it's really cool. I'll show some pictures here of some of the headstones that are there. Very unique, very impressive, you know, talking about how 
Detroit and Cleveland in this area was once the economic powerhouse of the world. You can imagine that some of the most elite and richest people once lived here. So the gravestones and such from that time are going to reflect that. I also like this one street that I, I've been to a few times. It's actually where I got this awesome Cleveland shirt, if you can see it here. Cleveland in the shape of Ohio. So I got this at this street. It's called Coventry Road. And so you go here, just a bunch of shops. It's kind of like a little hipster type neighborhood. There's uh, a few shops that have like t-shirts and novelties and stuff like that. So, you know, quick 30, 45 minutes you want to spend, I, I would recommend this street as well. All right, so outside of the these places and specific spots I want to go to, there are two, actually there's three staple kind of chains within the Cleveland area that I recommend. So the first one, which you're going to see on all the lists is called Slyman's Deli. Um, this is a corned beef sandwich type deli. Everyone, you know, from Cleveland is going to say this is a place you have to go. If it's your thing, I've been there. It's pretty good. I liked it. I really like their pickles actually, which is funny. I'm just remembering that from this picture, but that's a staple that anyone from Cleveland is going to tell you about. Uh, again, only in your state, this website that I found, they have a bunch here. It's funny because all three that I'm thinking of are on here. The next one is Melt. So Melt is a very interesting place. It's basically a grilled cheese restaurant. But when I say grilled cheese, I don't mean like bread and a piece of cheese. They have these outrageous sandwiches. So here's a couple examples of what you can find. You can buy them in a half or a whole. And I mean, they're like huge, huge. And they're stuffed with all kinds of different toppings, cheeses, things like that. Their food is really good. Uh, they have quite a few locations in the Cleveland area. I used to go to Independence, which is a suburb of Cleveland. And there was one there. So been there a bunch of times, but I definitely recommend them. Another place, there's one right downtown near East 4th Street, and there's also one uh, in Independence, and I think they have 10 or 15 locations, is Winking Lizard. So typical kind of like bar food, it's like a sports bar kind of atmosphere, but they have uh, really, really good wings. So if you're into wings, they have wings, they have some dry rub wings, which I've had a few times there, and I've found their food always to be really good. So another kind of local staple of uh, Cleveland that you might want to check out. Now, I'm going to get into something that's a little bit of cheating. It's outside of the city. It might not be part of Cleveland itself, but uh, it's definitely something notable about the area. So we've been talking about downtown and sports teams and buildings and restaurants, but uh, one thing not to be neglected is the nature that's around Cleveland. So just south of Cleveland is actually a national park. It's Cuyahoga Valley National Park. A lot of times we confuse the difference between state parks and national parks. There aren't a ton of national parks and they're all really special and there's one 25 minutes away from downtown and i definitely recommend it it's completely loaded with trails that you can walk and bike on it's really 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 pretty there's a bunch of waterfalls um, there's a train that goes through it i'll show some pictures here but one thing i absolutely have to recommend if you go here it's called ledges trail and this is a trail that you walk down and it's just filled with these like very unique rock formations that you kind of walk through and you can climb on and stuff. They're covered in moss and in the summer it's like super green. So it's uh, it's definitely really, really cool, very unique. And I think it's gotta be one of the main reasons why this place is a national park. And then finally, I wanna give one tip. I at least like to give one tip per city that I talk about. And in Cleveland, I'm gonna say this tip, it's not unique to Cleveland. It's not something that you wouldn't wanna use in other cities, but I guess just from my experience there, it seems to be an issue. So when you go downtown or when you're booking a hotel, hotel downtown, they're all going to say, yes, we have parking. And then they're going to say that there's a price for valet parking. And then you get there and there's no parking garages that you can see. And they're like, oh yeah, our parking is valet. And the prices are insane. I've uh, The Hilton Cleveland, I think it's $45 a night for valet. And you're going to get there and you're jammed into this small parking lot and they're like, what are you going to do, you know? So you feel under pressure, and I think a lot of people will end up paying those prices. Well, in Cleveland, in this area, there are a lot of these, like, little parks here. And believe it or not, underneath a couple of them, there's underground parking garages. So you might not see the parking right away, but if you look for it, it's right there. I've never had a problem leaving my car in any of these garages, and it's way less money. So if you're going, look this up first. Park in one of the garages down there. As long as you're not leaving your Louis Vuitton bag on your seat, you're like, you'll be completely fine. Everything is walkable down there, and it's just a lot easier. And then, hey, you don't even have to wait for Valley to get your car later. You have access to it whenever you want. So, again, maybe not a tip specific to Cleveland, but something that I've noticed that's just kind of an issue every time I go there. Now that we've finished some recommendations, I've given you an idea of what it's like. I'm going to give my uh, recap on my rating system and give Cleveland an official goose rating here. So... Remember here, I'm I'm a Michigan guy. Michigan and Ohio don't like each other. 
it's going to be hard for me to to love cleveland but in reality uh my time spent there was always great it's not perfect but if you're looking for one of those rust belt cities you know the one that has grit the one where the the people are passionate about where they're from and they really like it you're going to see the name of that city on every you know every wall and and every mural and people wearing the t-shirts i mean this is that kind of place so so going into our, my rating system now one goose is going to be skip it not worth your time two gooses is going to be hey if you have a reason in this case you know maybe you're ha you're going to a football game check it out while you're there you know three gooses is going to be it's worth your time so if what i've talked about in the city is something that speaks to you if you're into sports you're into going downtown yeah check it out four gooses is going to be i love it i recommend it you should go and then five gooses super rare is like my top choice favorites today is not going to be a five goose rating but i'm going to say for cleveland under the radar a city with that has maybe not the greatest reputation in the world i'm going to give it a solid three gooses i think it's worth it if you want to go to a football game you want to go to see the Cavs or go to a baseball game or maybe see the rock and roll hall of fame you'll have a good time and it's not hard to do because you can go downtown, you can eat there, you can party there, you can go to the museums, and you can have a great time. And I can't forget one thing that makes Cleveland awesome is the Christmas Story movie. And everywhere you go, you're going to see these lamps, right? The famous lamp with the leg. <laughs> so there's something to enjoy for everyone here. So again, three gooses. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Not number one top choice, but a pretty solid choice. And I really am glad that I've got to appreciate Cleveland over the years, and I definitely will be back. So thank you all for tuning in to episode two. It's just the second episode. Got more to come. Going to continue to get better and add more as we go. I'm looking forward to the next week's episode. So have a good one, and I'll see you all soon.